year is definitely giving black celebrities who aren't from America finding out what happens when they disrespect black American culture and black American culture rejecting them so quickly. to answer Charlemagne's question about race and looking back at her management team who then says, yeah, we're not going to answer that. Don't ask questions like that. Whether they decline the question because she's tired of answering it because they don't think it's relevant or they don't want it to be attached to her image doesn't really matter because it does send the message that they don't want to play by the rules of Black America, which they need to understand that Black Americans are very willing to take their attention away when they see that an artist is not playing for them right and this is exactly what happens with drake and not being invested properly in black american culture and suffering the consequences of that which is what makes this interview interesting because even if she doesn't agree with like the politics of of race in america and identifying within like the black american paradigm of race her complete decline to engage with it at all did i think to some people come off as like a bit of a spit in the face and just uh like okay if you're even act like you care to engage with that a lot of people are like then why would we support you I've lived in America, I've lived in LA, and I've lived in Canada, different places in Ontario. There really is such a magic and such an individual distinction that comes with Black American culture. And like, it's it's a tangible difference, like as somebody who has lived in both places. And so I can understand the um, urge to start to gatekeep a little bit more. And the urge to not like when, when somebody is from South Africa comes and doesn't want to answer any questions about like the black American perspective on race. A question like the one Charlemagne asked is a feeler that black Americans are going to use to see how much Tyla actually cares about them and their experience. Whether or not she and her team see it like that, her like turning her nose up at that question was just like not a good PR move. Do you know what I mean? And it reminds me of um, Drake saying, you know, always rapping, like you're trying to free the slaves or get the slaves freed. It's just going to feel a little bit disrespectful. But again, I don't think everybody's going to be upset with her. Like some people are going to totally get where she's coming from and her cultural background of that. I think even like, Canadians are more prone to understand Tyla's perspective on this. But I do think that if you're trying to be validated by the culture, which, and again, the culture is its own thing and it is American specifically. And like it, it originates from black American culture. And I think that if you want the validation and like the, the signed approval from like the heartbeat of the culture you do have to play by their rules a little bit or at least act like you're willing to entertain and humor them and if you're not and you seem like you think you're better than that that is not pr wise uh, gonna be a helpful thing and i saw a video yesterday talking about daniel caesar and i did not realize how aggressively canceled he got and that is the same thing that's just coming to my brain right now and it's very funny because again when you show that you don't have respect for black american culture they will cancel you and take away their eyes and that w- that was what breathed life and air into your career so that's a bad idea, bro. And that's that's it. That's the video. I mean, I agree with what she said. And I also agree with Tyler being tired, does not want to deal with the whole situation anymore. But she, you're not in South Africa anymore, Tyler. 
you're not in South Africa anymore. It's like you're in a different culture, in a different culture country with different people and you're marketing yourself to them so whether you like it or not you're going to fall under a category which is very hard for <laughs> for colors to come uh, to come to I don't, I don't even want to speak for colors because i'm a black woman i do not like to engage in conversations about other communities and it's very important i make that disclaimer very early on that we get to the juice of the meat what i'm trying to get at when i'm telling you this tyler you're in a different country you knew that you wanted an american audience right you wanted you could have said i am black fine just like tyler could um what what is that this one trevor just like him and this thing wouldn't have been brought up again and again and again but because they are pressed about you being colored in America, they just don't like it. You know, it's like they just don't like you calling yourself colored in America. Okay. And if you don't play by their rules, eventually, eventually, a lot of people are going to get annoyed by you. The people you're marketing your music to, they're just not going to support you like that anymore. They're just going to get tired of you and very quickly, you know. Like, if you don't understand that Americans can tend to be too much in lack of words, they can get to, to be extremely too much and can be seen as bullies at, at times. But this is how they are. You're marketing yourself to them. You have to play by their rules, even though you don't believe in it. You don't believe in it. In it. I've also come to realize that rihanna is not even black she's mixed she's a mixed woman but she was lumped in as a black person in america and she was like yeah yeah i'm black now but she's a mech she's a mixed woman let's just get that clear out there they were like uh don't tell us you're mixed but you're black here because there's a lot of mixed people in america and america de identifies them as black and uh, the concept of, of race in america is yeah, yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so you play by the rules or you get shifted up or you get shelved very quickly and you need their money girl just just get the money and just you know you play like you know you're just gonna burn out very quickly in america you're gonna get like them mentally disorganized like them so if you don't want to you might as well pack your bags go to johannesburg just like they tell you nicely though but i do agree with both perspective tyler being tired extremely tired of dealing with this whole thing and them just not understanding why she just does not want to just play by the rules of america so i i get it i get it completely i mean people like i get it i get why some south africans are like Kunini, are you tired? Like they're not gonna leave it, especially Americans who won't leave Drake. You know they are using Drake as well that they won't leave him and they are canceling him out because of the way he's behaving, and he's he just lost Drake for example, a major core audience that were black people that were listening to him pushing out his music. You know. And now they're like, oh, Drake, you're not, we're not vibing for you anymore since you've been in the pockets of white people and you're moving weird and we don't like you. So we are like back, sigh, back, and you know, we're taking off our attentions off of you, off of you. Do you get it? So like Tyler, you wanted America, babe. You wanted America. So you want you're gonna have to play but they tend to be like that americans they tend to be you know like a sprinkle too much but you wanted them so girl and guys i don't know i don't know how to look at this because i agree either way you know what i'm saying i agree here is a new blind item that is allegedly about tyla turning down gigs because she thinks she can do better this foreign-born, one-named industry plant was offered opening slots for lots of singers, but she turned them all down because she feels she is big enough to open for A-plus listers. She isn't. And again, this is allegedly Tyla. And the related headline reads, Charlemagne the God admits to disregarding Tyla's interviews requests. I have a job to do. 
Charlemagne the God has confirmed Peter Rosenberg's suspicions. Earlier this month, Tyla sat down for an interview with The Breakfast Club, which ultimately earned Charlemagne the God some backlash. At one point in the conversation, he asked the songstress about her identity as a South African colored person. He was shut down right away. Her publicist made it clear that she wouldn't be answering any questions about that particular topic, prompting some viewers to accuse her of denying her blackness. She later addressed a statement, clarifying that this was not at all her intention. I feel like you could have prepared yourself for this moment because when you go to shows like Charlemagne the God's show, podcast or whatever he is, you are just going to deal with the outcomes of that situation do you get what i'm saying so let's just continue with this conversation which is very numbing for me to think of it's very tiring very exhausting but let's continue you know that people don't like me but shout out to them because they bought my burner boy concert ticket the flight ticket to get there and the spending money for the week i spent in the dmv so you know i ain't never i ain't never really mad at them i fuck with them one of the biggest things I would say to my comments during that point in time was you can't tell us about our country and our race and this is what we are, this is how we do things in our country. And I, I, that's to be respected, right? Like that, first of all, race is a construct. So however your colonizers decided to set this construct up in your country and, and what you have been raised to identify as and by your default, how you your people have created a culture off of that, that is to be respected. I don't have no issue with colored people. I have since that information or since that information came out and I had that situation, some really cool South Africans took the time to be in my DMs and tell me about colored culture, essentially, and how it's its own thing. Like, shout out to them because there were so many nasty people, but there were some really nice ones who, who privately DMed me and educated me. And that is what's driving my opinion. So I have that respect of it at this point. That being said, do African-Americans not deserve the same respect? It's always said, like, Americans think everything's about them, da da da. But you're on a Black American radio show. You're promoting your music with Black Americans right now, like that. Long to the short, that's what's going on. If you didn't give a fuck, if you didn't think that this audience was a wasn't wasn't important, you would not be at the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne and DJ Envy. DJ Envy, the Hampton alum, HBCU grad, Charlemagne, Wendy Williams alum, another Black American. Like this is a this is a established Black American situation you're in, and you know that your team knows that. And I think that they would have done better to give her a cute little answer. I don't think they should have done the we're not answering that. Granted, they have seen the fallout of Twitter and everything that's been going on between the countries. I think if I had been her team, <laughs> if I had been her team, right, based on what I know now, I would have said I would have had I would have started and not a discussion because you're not really trying to do that on the breakfast club. But I definitely would have said, listen, I'm colored because if she's colored, she's colored, colored good magic. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what she is. I would have explained, you know, this is how we do stuff over here. And this is how y'all do stuff over here. And I respect it. I respect what y'all got going on over here. And if y'all got res respect what me and my people got going on over here, then it's all good. I think that that would have been such a better, oh, that would have been such a better response than we're, we're not answering. Don't answer that. Because then now it just seems like, well, why why are you over here trying to talk to us? If there's just there's just a given how the the conversations on the internet have gone, there's an air of brushing it off or disrespect that unfortunately is coming with it. I just think she should have really been honest. Also, you know, there's the whole thing Americans are self centered. Why why would I, I as an American understand the construct of race in South Africa? There's just simply no reason for that, right? But there was a really big opportunity here to kind of bridge that gap. So that these conversations on the internet wouldn't be just everyone yelling at each other and into the abyss because you're on a major platform right now. You could have really taken it and educated black Americans on what being colored is and and, and get and put it and put it up and giving it an air of respect. Do you like the opportunity was absolutely there and it didn't even have to get it, it didn't have to get too deep. It just even when Charlemagne kept going and said, What is colored? You could have been like, Oh, this is my culture and it's X, Y, and Z and da 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 and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean fuck black Americans. It doesn't mean it's just like we just have a different setup over here. Like I just think it was I wish they had went about it differently, and honestly, that's not Tyler's fault. I just want to make that clear. This is not Tyler's fault. This is her team fault. Her team really should have thought this through, and it makes me feel like she might not. I don't know. They probably just didn't want to get into the conversation, but sometimes I feel like getting into the conversation will elevate her status because now 
if they had gotten to the conversation, Tyler would have been seen as hurt by colored people. Oh, my God. Like, she proud of us and what we got going on over here. And then by black Americans, it would have been like, okay, like, no, I understand. I understand that. Okay, you fuck with what you are. I fuck with what I am. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, it just could have went, it could have went different to me. And it's, and it's not on Tyler. It's on her team. I prefer seeing real people saying real things instead of being media trained. Watch this and let's talk. Go school me on these debates that they be having about your identity as a South African colored person. Oh, what is, what does that mean? Me. me. Can we, yeah. Can we not? Oh, I like that. We keeping that in the interview too. <laughs> I like when they talk from the back and say we can't. I like that. I like the character. That's good. That's even better. <laughs> Next one, please. That's even better. One of the most important takeaways when it comes to being media trained is being able to control the narrative in the room. It is your job to do that. You're walking into a room. You're having a conversation for a particular reason. There's a reason why you are there to promote something, to spread awareness, etc. It is your job to control the narrative in the room to ensure everyone stays on track. You are there to not only control the narrative, you are also there to make sure that the message that you intend to get across gets across successfully. And by having that training, by having that awareness and being prepared for the space, you can ensure those type of things. She needed to answer the question in a way that basically redirected the conversation back on track to where it needed to be to promote what she was there to promote. This was an opportunity for her to get ahead of this question ever being asked again. She did not do that. And by turning back and looking at her management or PR to speak on her behalf was to keep everybody on the conversation of promoting her music. But it did the opposite. Now people are going to be focused on this conversation versus her music. And she's going to have to spend time rebuilding the trust of her audience. And it's going to take her having this hard conversation in order to do so. This is why media training is key to your big success. If you are a woman entrepreneur who has a personality driven brand like Tyla, you have to be prepared to control the narrative in every room that you walk in. This year is definitely giving black celebrities who aren't from America finding out what happens when they dis. I'm not sure if you're going to see this, but like, I hope you do. Um, you know, seeing Tyler being attacked like this, kind of like, it's not nice. <laughs> and I think about, let's talk about hair, right? When black women weren't allowed to wear the natural hair into work environments, because for some reason it was offensive you know it was your hair growing from your scalp but it was offensive have you guys just ever considered that that could be the case for tyler like her race is on probably her birth certificate it literally says colored but you are saying erase that to make us more comfort more comfortable so it's like you guys have gone through um a personal racial you know erasure of your own and not fitting into white systems in your own way and like now you have a young african lady amongst you and you almost like you need you want her as well to then have to go through any a personal erasure of her own to fit in your system because she didn't ask to be born colored but she is colored. But she's telling her being colored is offensive. The same way you didn't ask, some black woman didn't ask to be born with coily hair. But at some point, it was said to be untidy and offensive to have that hair in the office. Guys, I don't know. I think there's something very oppressive that you're doing to Tyler. And uh, you guys don't realize, like, <laughs> you guys don't realize it. I mean, you could have just said, oh my God, it's so strange. That is so weird. That is so weird that you guys think it's okay. And then let it go. But instead, you guys just like hold on to it. And you just, it's like you are looking for something to crucify her on or for or with. And you've chosen that this is the thing that you're going to bury her with. Wow. Wow. Wow.
she avoided the question because she genuinely just doesn't know what to say anymore like that's her race literally it's literally her birth race she's colored she's colored that's why she's like i don't know what to say you you know you know you're not you must construing it like she's putting her nose up no she's she feels like hopeless she feels like what do i it's like me going into another parallel universe and being black is offensive and i can't say i'm black when i'm i'm i've grown up black my whole life and then i keep trying to explain that I, i'm black and they keep telling me you can't be black that's offensive and then it gets to a point where what do i even say i'm da like if i say then I'm not black. Let's say I decide to say I'm purple. I'm being I'm being dishonest. I'm a liar. And do I want to compromise my integrity like that? And if I say I'm black, you're still gonna like those people would still crucify me for it. Guys, is is all of this really is it necessary what you're putting Tyler through? Like I guess I be am like I'm Americans. So be am like Zini. Because Utaila is being managed by Americans, first of all, right? And Utaila is, is based in America. Tyler is making money off Americans. You know, she's not really making money from South Africans. You know, Niam Hyper, you just hype her, she goes to Mall of Africa, and that's it. Her major support is really where she's actually making the money is in America. But in Je, apparently, allegedly, the minute Americans start saying something about Tyler, you are there, backing, you know, woof, woof. And you got Americans are getting fed up because they're like, send her back to the center. We don't want her. They're even saying things like, we, we just hope her career flops. We don't give a f about her. Like, they've, they've gotten to a point where they actually just don't care about the whole Tyler thing because, first of all, Tyler is definitely, um, you know, benefiting from the American culture, you know. She's in America, you know. Her managers are Americans. She is, most of the time, in America. She is making her music, in well, in America. You, do you know what I mean? She's doing interviews in America. You know, she's choosing what and what not to answer in America. So Americans are pissed off. They are just fed up. They are just like, you know what? You're not going to come to our country, want to actually benefit from our culture and our money. And the next thing, you don't give us the respect that we need, especially your people. Because every time there's a question or there's something that has to do with Utaila, I, the mob, the mob just mobs, you know. And I, guys, I feel it. The thing is, at the end of the day, Unfortunately, we and we are easily swayed to fighting and just showcasing what is our mark, But we don't have the cash, guys. Let me tell you, we don't have the money to support Tyler as much as the Americans are going to be supporting Tyler. You know, I don't understand what he like why I totally land because the people that are making Tyler rich, rich. I know South Africans. It's not South Africans that are making Tyler rich. It's the Americans. You know, it's people outside of South Africa. It's not us. Honestly, <laughs> with our rents, it's not us that are making that are that are making Tyler rich. It is the Americans. So I mean, I'm sensitive. Unje. It's like the minute they are trying to just find out, because they're trying to find out about this person that they are supporting with their money, with their time, you know, with their energy. Uguti. You know, but in I, we are always waiting with fangs in fangs. So they are like, Mtaten, Lutaila win, as something like we don't need her, we don't give a fuck about her, we just hope her career flops because, you know, I'm just a messenger from MZ. <laughs> don't come for me you know i think this discussion <laughs> that i think should have ended a few months ago about tyler's race and ethnicity is really revealing why globalization is not going to connect us as much as we'd want to if americans don't let go of american hegemony okay
And I say Americans because while it is black Americans who are mostly engaging in this conversation, I think the way they're going about it, um, the, 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 the lack of understanding of other people's cultures and ways in which the world operate, I think that's a uniquely American way of going about this conversation. And I mean, I'm not trying to turn this into a diaspora war because, first of all, I really do understand black Americans. I think black Americans' culture has been exported globally, but also been stolen from them, been appropriated. Often their struggles and concerns are not taken seriously. And I really do understand this idea that Tyler is being marketed as black in America. But I think that speaks less to an intentional decision by Tyler and more to the way America operates and who America is, what America is in the global economy. The biggest, uh, most of the media and entertainment in the world, the biggest like entertainment economy exists in America, right? It is why most people are not considered global superstars until they can breach into the American market. And it's because America has put itself at the center of the world. Okay, even the reason why black American culture is the Afri is the black culture that has permeated globally the way it has is because of America's position in the global economy. So I just don't feel like it's this girl's fault, right? I don't think it's her fault at all. And it also brings into question what is our responsibility as consumers and what skills do we need to have to engage with other people's cultures in order to maximize on globalization? Because Americans have to step outside of that bubble at this point because what it's beginning to feel like is like everyone else must explain the context of where they come from but us we're just supposed to understand how America operates and I say this because I think there's even a lot of black people a lot of black artists who are seen as black in America who in other parts of the world people would be like what do you mean that's a black person what do you mean that's a black person but because we are the ones who tend to be consuming American media, we've had to educate ourselves on how to consume this content given the cultural context of where it comes from. And I feel like that is a courtesy that should be extended to everyone. And that includes Tyler. To ask that woman to essentially, what is her racial translation in America? It's asking her to erase her South Africanness and her cultural heritage and her ethnicity and her race really in the South African context just so she can be understood in America. I feel like as a consumer, we also have, as consumers, we also have the responsibility to educate ourselves about where the art we're consuming comes from. Because this girl, Tyler is intentionally trying to platform herself as South African and put South Africa on the map, right? Like, this is an intentional decision that she's making. She wants people to learn about her culture, about her, through her music. And as a consumer of her music, I feel like it is... They, you have a responsibility to extend yourself so that you can understand where it's coming from. She's not trying to say that she has a problem with being seen as black. She's trying to say, just saying I'm black erases so much of my cultural and ethnic origins. So yeah, I'm sorry to say it. My conclusion is, Americans, let's open the books. Let's start to learn about other people's cultures and how to consume them. Because she might be marketed as one thing, but this girl is South African. And her South Africanness and her coloredness should not be erased. Simply because people can't comprehend that. Oh, and side note. I mean, it still ties into this conversation. But I think this is really making me realize that, like, even as globalization is happening, we're really not on equal standing. America is still smack in the center of everything we consume globally. And I really do think that needs to change. And I think if we stop centering uh, America and Americans, uh, we can begin to actually enjoy the fruits of globalization a bit more. Also, if people stop stealing from black people, <laughs> that would be nice globally. I'm, look, I'm looking at you. Sir. I talked about the erasure of monoracial black women in media. And something this Tyla discourse has made me think about is if we are intent, if there are some people who are intent on erasing her coloredness and saying she's just black, she's black. OK, what then happens when she is given opportunities for black women? Does the discourse then become she's taking opportunities from black people she's taking opportunities from black women and in a certain vein it doesn't really seem to matter if you are a monoracial black woman because we've also seen the same discourse happen as it pertains to cynthia arrivo and now io edibiri and i also saw the same discourse with 
John Boyega. We really got to be very mindful and careful about what you're asking for because if people want to downplay and dismiss her being colored and say she is black when she gets opportunities for black women the conversation can't then become she's not black. You got to be careful what, what, what you wish for. Be, be very mindful of what you're asking for. That's all. And something this Tyla discourse has made me think about is if we are intent, if there are some people who are intent on erasing her coloredness and saying she's just black, she's black. Okay. What then happens when she is given opportunities for black women? Just like Nora Smith, people be saying I can see the blackness in her. I'm like, where? I don't have to look at you more than a minute to search for your blackness. It has to be evident. I am fully black. There's no confusion about it. People need to be educated on the differences between descendant of a black person and being fully black. There's no erasure there. Soon we're going to have a conversation about the texturism, the colorism, the featureism, and who is also considered feminine within this category of blackness. Because the dark-skinned girlies who are actually black will be harmed by this. Broader nose, the big lips, and rich afro hair, that will be considered masculine. These monoracial girlies will be considered black and more feminine and more soft. Sun dry. You equivalate disagreeing with your political party being the DA. Violence. And this is not me assuming you are telling me that I'm inciting violence and that I am not okay. And then you double down in this comment, gaslighting me. I don't know why you'd look at me when you see my face, but it's not dummy, that's for sure. I don't care what you've gone through. You can go up to the moon. I still wouldn't give a damn. You're definitely not colorblind. Color is the issue. And how you even interact with me is the issue. We all experience life as people. And on top of experience in life, you don't have the addition of dealing with systemic oppression. And this is your defense citing violence, isn't it, Sundry? Go have this conversation with black people who suck up to you. Don't bring it here. You're just going to further piss me off. We as black people, we also need to be honest about being black. More than it has to do with being colored. Majority of black women procreate with black men. Our genetics interacts change with one another when a baby is created. A female child might inherit the dark skinness of the father, the nose and the lips as well. Those are black features. The texturism and the color as well, they are genderless because those are black features. However, what happens then when we start mixing everyone such as Nara Smith and Tyler into this group of being black? Because our population is growing, mind you. We start considering anything that's Eurocentric beautiful being closer to white that is thin thin lips thin nose thinner hair a thinner body as well we're gonna say things like tyler is black she's not nara smith is black she's not they descended from a black woman or from a black man whom were black people but they're not black i am black Another thing is this as well when we put a gender on black features and then they become inherent in black girls who are then dark as well this justifies them being harmed because their features are more associated with men. And then a 12 year old can go through something very traumatic by a white man or any other man. You then find ways to justify crimes because this then group of black does not associate black girls with manly features, women, or rather yet girls. Therefore, it then justifies them being harmed by men because we as black people tend to behave like colonizers on the colonizer's behalf. Let's be honest as well. You do not like black kids unless they are mixed with something else. You are the first ones to bully black kids and then justify your harmful intentions or your harmful acts by saying, oh, well, she looks like a man. Oh, this is why it happens to her. If only she looked more like a woman. What is a woman in blackness? Some, not all of them, have descended from black people which means that they have ancestry of black people in their dna they are not actually black like me and you they have other genetic makeup of other races within them it is actually harmful to actual black people to group them with monoracial people you it is your harmful intentions and i say harmful intent because it is you telling me to stop excluding colored people that is not even your fight your fight should be being a present father dealing with patriarchy how to even relegate your emotions without them turning into violence fighting back for our resources it is harmful to group monoracial people 
with black people, especially to dark-skinned women with mainly associated features. You black men in South Africa as well, you're the same ones to bully black South African women. And strip us black women of what makes us feminine. And also consider non-black women such as colored or white women as feminine. And attribute us black women as masculine. Therefore justifying the violence that keeps on happening to us because we are behaving masculine. Want to group us with this monoracial women so that you so that you can have access to them also you have to use these monoracial girls as the standards of beauty the standards of feminine and your treatment also towards black women depends on how closer they are to whiteness i'm also not forgetting the black women who think like you internalized misogyny what a fucking recipe no one said colored people are our enemies. That is something that needs to be made clear. Here's the thing, and this is a heel I'm about to die on. We as black people have so many issues in our community. On top of that, you want to add multiracial people in the conversation. You cannot even coexist with your own black people without excluding white people. That is why most of you black people voted the DA. At this point, it has nothing to do with colored people. It has everything to do with you. You lack too much self-love need to be closer to colored people you need to be closer to white people they cannot exist as themselves because you need them closer to you to feel as a human being they are not black they descended from black people and that's if they even have black ancestry or african ancestry but yet to fix your issues with your black people you're already jumping borders you want to do the lozako america where it was black american men who wanted multiracial women now is there more than anyone else marrying outside of their community I'm honestly happy that Tyler curved they asses the way that she did. Tyler, baby, you don't need to explain your ethnicity to anyone. The educated African Americans understand the cultural and historical significance to the word colored associated with people who are of mixed ancestry from South Africa. Let's get into it. Very similar to the racial injustices that we face here in the United States, apartheid was a system of institutionalized racial segregation that existed in South Africa and Southwest Africa from 1948 to the early 1990s. Apartheid was a product of class warfare. It was a way to separate the minority white um, settlers at the time from the black indigenous people in South Africa. So the best way to separate and segregate essentially is to impose race classifications. And there were four different race classifications. There were native, colored, Asian, or white. We know what native, Asian, and white are, so let's talk about colored. The colored people of South Africa are what we would deem multi-generationally mixed or biracial people. They are mixed of European, African, and Asian ancestry and were officially defined by the South African government from 1950 to 1991. So not too long ago. So in the same way that the negative effects trickle down onto us in modern day society from chattel slavery and Jim Crow and further persecution and subjugation for another hundred years after. Um, same thing could be said for the South Africans and them trying to unlearn inherently discriminatory practices in government. At the end of the day, it's giving ethnocentrism. It's giving you have a different relationship with the word colored than she may have because we come from different places. Pick up a history book.